28, well, it's 2.26, and a mother has alleged that she discovered at a parent-teacher meeting that her daughter now defines herself as a boy. The mother says the school had started using male pronouns to refer to the 13-year-old without even telling her. Well, this comes as a survey of equality and transgender policies at more than 600 schools in Devon and Cornwall showed a large majority reportedly misrepresented equality laws. Yes, some of the school policies reportedly claim children as young as five could show signs of gender dysphoria. Hmm. Well, joining us now to discuss this is the founder of Our Duty Group, Keith Jordan. Um, Keith, the government seems to have been clear, but perhaps they haven't been clear enough, um, that schools do need to tell parents if their child is claiming to be a boy when they're biologically a girl. Is that not right? Um, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said that the government has not been clear enough. Um, the uh, draft guidance um, was published uh, about uh, two months ago, um, which was open for consultation, and the consultation on that has closed. And that draft guidance, um, in my view and in the view of many others, did not go far enough in uh, making it absolutely clear that schools should not be uh, socially transitioning, which is um, the, the word we use to describe um, allowing children to go by uh, pronouns and names not associated with their sex. Schools should not be allowing children to be socially transitioning at school. Um, but that was not made uh, abundantly clear in the draft guidance that went out. Um, it, was, it was certainly... Um, <sighs> Made, it was certainly made clear that schools should not be doing it, but the guidance really needed to say that schools must not do it. What, um, what do you mean that... by schools doing it? Because there are some instances of, of children in the United Kingdom, say someone who's 16, who is transitioning, uh, as a matter of legal fact, is transitioning. There are some individuals under the age of 18 who are doing that, who attend schools. Are you saying that schools should actively work against that? Um, my personal view is that schools should active, actively work against that. Um, uh, uh, you, you're absolutely right that legally um, we have got gender reassignment as a protected characteristic in the Equality Act, which um, makes the terrain um, very difficult for schools to navigate. Um, you, you are, um, the legislation implies that there is a legitimacy if given to a child identifying out of their natural sex. Um, and I would like to raise the question, should we be giving that um, idea that a child gets in their head, mm. the legitimacy that we are giving it. Because um, yeah, I've been working with families affected by this for six or seven years now, um, and we've formed quite a clear picture of how this manifests itself in teenagers. And it really boils down to um, these children getting the idea in their head and then they ruminate on it for a long time. And personally, from the experiences I've had, from the parents I've spoken to, from clinical psychologists I've spoken to, um, you, you, these children who say they are transgender doesn't actually mean that they're transgender. Mm. I mean, Keith, one of the key things for me with all this is whether teachers should tell parents. Now, I think it should absolutely be the case in nearly 100% of cases that if teachers suspect that a child is presenting themselves as a different gender without their parents even knowing, that they should be on the phone to the parents immediately. It's a safeguarding issue. It's something that parents must know. But some people argue, well, hang on, what if the child has come to you in, uh, in confidence and told the teacher, you know what, I'm feeling gender dysphoria, would you mind calling me uh, she instead of, instead of he? I can't tell my parents because they're transphobic or whatever. Um, can it be a bit tricky for teachers? Because they want to look after the child, don't they? 
Um, well, absolutely, yes. I mean, um, there's a duty of care um, from schools, uh, from educational professionals to always act in the best interests of the child. Um, uh, also, you rightly point out to safeguarding. Um, and one key uh, aspect of safeguarding is there should not be secrets. Um, so uh, uh, the default position should always be to tell the parents. Hang on, hang now, on, hang on uh, Keith. Keith, if you say there should be never, never be secrets, what if a child tells a teacher that they trust, for example, that they're gay? And their families yeah. might be incredibly religious, their families might be not accepting of that fact. Do you think in that situation the teacher must tell the parents? I don't. Um, if a child, if a child is gay, there isn't a health risk associated with that. Um, so. And you're not, not demanding a, anyone it, call it, you by a different pronoun, are you? You're not arguing for someone to change the way that it, they treat it, you in it, school. Exactly. Yeah. So c coming out as gay is not a safeguarding issue. Coming out as transgender is a safeguarding issue. But doesn't the safeguarding um, issue apply at home as well as at school? In fact, the majority of the child's time will be at home. And if a teacher but, has just outed a child to their parents and those parents are not accepting, that could be a very dangerous situation. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but what you'll find is a lot of children will say, oh, don't tell my parents because they're transphobic, um, as just a means of avoiding the conversation that they really should mm. be having with their parents. We must assume that in the vast majority of cases, parents have the best interests of their children yeah. at heart. And teachers um, are not the parents. Teachers are not the yeah, parents. I'm really sorry to butt in there, Keith, but we've run out of time. But it's been really great okay. to get your perspective. Keith Jordan, the founder of Our Duty Group. I think we'll come back to this um, a little bit. Um, more to say on that. Uh, we'll get the news headlines. But coming up, it's understood dozens of MPs. We're going to come back to the Honeytrap scandal too. So do stay tuned. <laughs>